It's the NFL on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the NFC North. It's the Chicago Bears and the Minnesota Vikings. Next, on Madden NFL 24. And we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Today, we've got what's always a hard-hitting battle in the NFC North, as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Gordon, so pleased to be joined, as always, by Charles Davis. As CD, these Vikings had things rolling in 2022, a 13-4 record, new head coach, an exciting offense, but it all came crashing down in another early playoff exit. And that really was because of the defensive side of the ball. They had a terrific record. Would they win 11 games by one score or less in NFL record? Got to get strong on the defensive side in order to get deeper into the playoffs. And then for the visiting Bears, they want to wipe the slate clean from 2022. Now, working in their favor, we've seen plenty of teams in the NFL make big turnarounds from year to year. What can the Bears do to you know, just get back closer to maybe seven, eight wins, Charles? Well, they want to coalesce all this young talent that they're accumulating and guys that they've brought in from the outside and start to build a culture, a feeling around this team that they know they can compete week in and week out. Two teams more than ready to get this one started. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. Taken at the goal line. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They're led out by the rookie, picked 164th in this past draft out of BYU, Jaron Hall. Tell you what, partner, he might just be a rookie, but he certainly looks the part of a veteran NFL starter, and he carries himself like one leading the offense out there. In a lot of ways, he is advanced as a first-year quarterback, and he came in and was right at home with this offense. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Hall. sack multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game and so much for that great field position to start the game now they're way behind the sticks can't wait to see what their second down call is going to look like now so a tough early challenge here second and long after the sack throwing here is hall into the hands of the rookie jordan addison and they'll wind up getting this to the 37 gain of nine that was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. To the right side, and complete to Jefferson. And this effort won't do it. He needed to get to the 45. He's a yard or two short. Their opening drive here is going to result in a punt. They got seven yards there, but not enough. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Taylor now returning it. A 39-yard punt, a return of five, and the Bears take over. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third-year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly as both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 18. A man who led the league in yards per carry last year, it's Khalil Herbert. Pass the 20 for a short gain, second down. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. 
They run with a former Panther. It's Deontay Foreman. And only a couple there up to about the 23-yard line. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you. And sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to pour one over his head as this game progresses. From the gun on third down, Fields. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Jonathan Bowler drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly, and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. Here's Powell on the return. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. <laughs> just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and they out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Hall. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Here's Hall. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it breaks up fourth down. Not much happening offensively here early on. That's two drives and zero first downs. This defense, they've come to play, and they're the better of the two units here so far. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? The drive starts with Foreman on the ground. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Nice satisfying run up first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Fields. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the short catch and flip the down marker back to one. They run it on first with Foreman. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. When trying to create space for your running back, the first thought is how physical is the offensive line? Sometimes it's just positioning. On that play, it didn't matter about positioning or being physical. The defensive front, they outleveraged them and won the battle. On second down, a run with Herbert. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 
It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches wanted to catch the football first. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Haven't been a corner that's worth this song yet that ever admits to worrying about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up? Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Now it's Fields. This one complete to Tunyon underneath. And he will have the Bears first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. A much different second drive here, Charles. They go three and out the first time. This time they've been able to sustain something downfield. And that's what often happens. You get the game started. You know, you have to get your footing underneath you. You have to get used to the flow of the game, the speed of the game. And sometimes that first drive is more of a probing drive. It appears they found something here in the second one. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. Here's Fields. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. They got to get to the 23 here on third. Fields now to throw. They'll get this complete to the Notre Dame man, Equinemi of St. Brown. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. What we hear so often, how tackling has become almost a lost start in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. They snap it to Fields. And he is caught. And down inside the 15 he goes. That's a fourth down pickup of 10 yards and an opportunity certainly missed on the defensive side. They only needed that one yard going for it on fourth. I got to be honest. I thought they were going to stay on the ground. They surprised me. Did they surprise you? I'm with you on that one. I thought they'd find a way to create some type of a power run and try and pick up the first down. But they decided to keep the ball in the hands of the guy who could throw it. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Deontay Foreman, 14 yards. And the Bears are on the board first here this afternoon. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. and Each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Santos with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown run.
Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. Kene Nwagu now out of his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. And now out comes Minnesota. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. They'll start on the ground with Madison. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. All to throw it. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Back to throw Hall. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Jefferson moving in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. Well, we've seen running backs in today's NFL get involved in the passing game. Maybe it's about time more receivers like that get involved in the running game. And that is something we are seeing more and more in this league, no question about it. That wasn't the biggest of gains, but it was enough to get them a first down. And it continues to test the defense. They have to think on every play about who might end up with the ball. Call it a gain of three on the play, and that'll make it second down. They'll go Madison up the middle. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme. When you have a blocker on a defender, and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole, and just go, it's sometimes a thing of beauty. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here's Hall. Over the middle and complete to Addison. They'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Now Hall, looking for Addison again, and he's got him again. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. 
I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Had met a quarterback yet that didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder if he wasn't a first round pick. They want to show the league that they made a big mistake. Determined to get the first down there, no hesitation at all to tuck it and go. I bet he would have tried to run into their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. On second and goal, Hall. He throws it on the move but can't connect as that ball is incomplete. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodge two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. There's Addison. Touchdown, Vikings. Four yards on the touchdown ground. And the Vikings are an extra point away from drawing level. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Joseph connects on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. The Chicago offense set to get started. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now, they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. They'll start the drive with a give to Foreman. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now, that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now, if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Herbert powering up the middle. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. Good push up front in that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. Foreman powering ahead. Tackle made there by Jordan Hicks. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Now second and nine. On oh, the option left is Fields. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 
Nice pickup. Ten yards and a first down on the keeper. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. Now give to Foreman. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Brandon, that's what you call being manhandled at the point of attack, and I know the offensive line gets a lot of blame for that one, but occasionally the defense just knows what you're going to do. Maybe they scouted it perfectly. Maybe someone tipped it off, but on that play, it had no chance. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. And we often talk about defensive end setting the edge, sometimes even the outside linebackers, but how about here? This is a quarterback essentially setting the edge and finishing off that play for a loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. And that is very well done there, as this will be marked out of bounds at the five-yard line. Jordan Addison in the offense out for another drive. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. Especially with a touchdown. <laughs> yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of plays. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. They were looking for a little spark and some breathing room. They got it right there, a gain of 14 and a first down. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Had him pinned back there deep, give up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was whatever is in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw again, Hall. Dancing to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Give him 18 on the play. And Charles, in the past, a lot of people called this offense one-dimensional. I think you did. Well, it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past from them, they needed to broaden, and they have done it here. Look at what he's bringing to their offense, and now as a defensive coordinator, you've got some extra work to do to prepare for him and their offense. Here's Madison running on first down, and they will only muster a yard here to the 38. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Now Hall to throw on second down. Throw to the right, hauled in by Addison. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. That'll go as a pickup of 32 on the catch and run. He scored their touchdown earlier, and this had a chance to be another. This secondary scrambled for answers, looking at each other, trying to figure out who is going to put the clamps on this guy, because right now, he's absolutely shredding them. So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. On the handoff, it's Madison, and nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. 
That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. To throw on second down. Hall out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now we've got a third down and three. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. To throw it is home on first and 10. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Operating from the gun. Oh, throw left side taken in by Jefferson. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Out of the gun now on third down. Toward the end zone, but that's gonna wind up incomplete. And based on my math, They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Joseph's got it, and they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Joseph now to kick this one away. And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. A run by Foreman to start the drive, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They run again with Foreman. And no luck at all to start this drive as they're going to drop him behind the line for a second straight play. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. Third and long, it's Fields. Complete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. One of those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. 
And here's Trenton Gill now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch call for and made just inside the 35-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Second down and a yard. Now it's Hall. Middle of the field to Jefferson. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or? Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. From the 46-yard line, a second down and six. Throwing here is Hall. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. Again, he'll drop to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Here's Hall. Looking left sideline, incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there, and it's third down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Back to throw again. To the sideline and incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Draw play, Madison. 
And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, a 31-yard attempt. The kick by Joseph is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. Well, a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've reached halftime here on New Year's Eve. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, this coach, is certainly yeah, been a fun one to watch so far. Gonna play we knew this was going to be a battle. We have quarter, not been disappointed. Been this is the kind so of far. game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. The Bears going to see the football first, and they trail here as we get back underway to start this second half. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. And the Bears offense set to go to begin the third quarter. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. They'll start on the ground here on first down. That's to about the 28, second down coming up. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Now an option play on second down. And he powers his way up past the 30. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Here is third down and four. Back to throw. Fields throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive in the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Here comes the Bears punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Oh, the return is Powell. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at their own 37. 
Going to begin the drive here with Madison. Broken tackle. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Here's Madison getting it again on second. And he'll get about three here up to the 44-yard line. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. From the gun on third down. Oh, pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Here's a give to Madison running right. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Stopped on the play by Jaquan Brisker. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Montez Sweat, the man that time to fight in and drop him. They tried to go with a little play action there, but nobody on the defensive side bit. Yeah, they adjusted in time and in a big way and ultimately got the sack on offense. Sometimes you're running play action just to set up a certain blocking technique. In this case, none of it worked. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. The 20! And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 13-yard line. They got 29 yards that time. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Here's Madison running left. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. Not a big run, not an explosive run, but they've held the ball for plenty of plays on this drive. They're just trying to impose their will on the defense right now. Here's second and seven. Slot man moves right. Now fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. Here's Hall on third down. Yeah, quick throw here, that's complete. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way their defense 
defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting three. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that can all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game. But as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that lead. Joseph now to kick this one away. On the return, here's Tyler Scott. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. But now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They'll fake the handoff, now Fields. And Lewis has it, the tight end. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, he'll take that every single time. Foreman will try to pick it up. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Fields going to keep it running right. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. appears to be an injured bear on the field while they come out and take a look at him we will step aside for just a moment These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Here's Fields. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down, as that was not an easy one to hold on to. When you run in the slant, timing is everything, and against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. Here comes the Bears punter now as he's on to kick it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. So possession goes over here on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. start this drive out on the ground and he'll get what he can up the middle three yards and that'll bring up second down look all any running back wants is a little bit of room a little bit of space in order to maneuver 
but he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. All to throw it. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Back to throw, Hall. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. That'll go as a pickup of eight. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. In motion right is Osborne. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Stopped on the play by Kyler Gordon. You don't see that a ton, do you, with the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Here's Hall. Out route to Jefferson, and he's got it. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Now here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. And he's up in it after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From the 25, here's second and six. Now Fields. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. But Kai Blackman's got it. And they will be set up now as he brings this thing all the way back inside the 20. Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner. And with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day to pick, and a lot of people thought he had first round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You called that pick in early and he shows why he was so coveted with that interception there. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. But following the interception, they're set up nicely here, already inside the red zone, knocking on the door, if you will, first and 10. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now Hall. And his throw is incomplete. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. 
imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. To throw on second and 10, Hall, his throw incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and 10. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Looking to throw. Hall. Oh. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Brings up fourth down. Solid coverage by the Bears' D. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Here's Greg Joseph now to try the field goal. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. Joseph's got it, and that will extend their lead even further. So the interception set him up a terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. Joseph now to kick this one away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 22. They'll start out here with the option left. Tough running, but not a lot to show for it. They stop him shy of the 25. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. From the 24 now, here's the second and eight. Field's going to keep it once more. He'll get five out of the keeper, but now it's third down. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get, so he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. The Bears on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. Here it's third and three. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he will have the Bears first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. Partner, I know we're in the era of the mobile quarterback, but there's still an element of surprise when that position keeps the football, and what a nice gain on that play. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Off play action, Fields. This will be caught downfield by Moore. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 25 yards that time. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 42-yard line. A handoff for Herbert. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? 
Ball on the 36 now. Here's a second down and four. Fields. He'll get that underneath to Herbert. So no gain on the play. And that'll bring us to a third and four. That was impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes, and they were able to put the receiver on the ground. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Here's Fields. And that is incomplete. Give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. The fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. From the right hash, this from 53. And that is no good. He gave it a good run. That wasn't more than a foot or so wide to the left. And that will keep this a 12-point game. Now listen, now no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their background. They were all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Now it's Hall. Throw's going to be incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Here's second and ten. They'll go Madison up the middle. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Hall to throw on third down. And that is incomplete critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Taylor now to return it. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 23. They'll start the drive with a give to Foreman. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 67 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move him off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. Fields now to throw. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 
Fields to commit there for a Chicago first. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You've got the first one for the second one to even matter. They run it on first with Foreman. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It was Daniil Hunter to make the play in the backfield. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Looking to throw on second down, Fields. And that one's gonna come up a little short. It's incomplete. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there, tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now it's Fields. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Trying to fit it into Moore, but it's intercepted. Makai Blackman's got it. And the Vikings are going to get the football here as he gets this up to the 38-yard line. But I guess an interception at this point on fourth down is just as bad as an incomplete pass. Either way, the ball goes over the other side. He has a tough spot to be in this late in the game, and there's not a whole lot he can do there. And he winds up giving the ball away. And the football going back to the Vikings offense. They have to like the position that they are in. Fourth quarter, two-score lead, and now the ball back after the INT. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 38. Throwing here is Hall. Short throw caught by the tight end, Oliver. So the completion good for just three. And it's second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? From the 41, Hall. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. The passing game continues to be their friend. Even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles, they're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there, but it'll be second down. Here's Hall. Slant route, and he's got Addison. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 38-yard line. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slant. But normally you might say start running the football, you've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think you continue to do so. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. to the left sideline and incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, 
always different no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. On third down, Hall. That is caught. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 13-yard line. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now a give to Madison. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it out. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down. So let's sort this out. So obviously, they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. Joseph on for the extra point. And that one makes this a 19-point game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And this take it in at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Now a second and 10. Back to throw, Fields. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. The Bears on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and 10. To throw his fields. They set up the screen to Foreman. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. So it looks like the offense isn't going anywhere. They're going to go for it on fourth and seven. They snap it to Fields. They'll let this go deep for St. Brown. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The Bears tried it on fourth down, unable to convert. And the 
Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. They'll run it with Madison. He's able to get six, a nice pick up down to the 21. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Now we'll throw here to his running back. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Another carry now for Madison. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. They'll come up now third and nine. Back to throw. Hall. Oh. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. And well, they could just run this clock out, but here is the field goal unit on fourth down. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. Well, on one side of this, Charles, an impressive victory. On the other, I mean, you think about it, they scored in the first quarter, but then they didn't score in quarters two, three, or four. They're going to have a lot of work to do before stepping back on the field. Yeah, it'll be an interesting tape to analyze, won't it? Because why did it work in the first quarter, but nothing in quarters two, three, and four? So we always talk about adjustments. You don't just wait till halftime. You do it series to series. They'll be working on that in preparation for their next game. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.